All right, well, it's Sunday, another gorgeous day. It's a little cooler today. It's probably in the mid 70s, which is nice. Real windy though, but luckily, it's one nice thing about having the boat on the north side is when we have a south wind, I get no wind. So, eh, you get a little bit here and there. It kind of circles around. Oh yeah, look at that. So, what I'm gonna do today is I'm gonna show you guys how to uh, remove a transom. Um, there's a few simple tools you're gonna need and a lot of patience. And a lot of people make this such a big deal when it's really just a matter of uh, just getting in here and doing it. So the main tools you're gonna need are a couple of chisels, which uh, I like the big fat ones. I went and bought a new one this morning because the only one I had left is this one. You can see the difference. It just kind of helps you get a little more bite uh, into when you're going into the transom. And uh, this is actually used when you get the majority of it out. What you wanna do is you wanna get the majority of the bulk, which is all this garbage by using your hammer and your rubber mallet and pry bars of miscellaneous sizes and shapes and where's my other one i got another big one here that's really nice i must have left it in the garage but um <clears throat> it's basically one that's it looks like a crowbar and enables you to get in there nice and flat and uh and uh, pry it out okay so this is the one i was talking about uh it gives you lots of different prying options plus you can hit your hammer right here and really you should only use this one for removing the top layer. If there's multiple layers, you see you never wanna go in and pry against the hull, ever, because what's gonna happen is you're gonna split the gel coat and the hull on the outside. So all I'm using this for is to get like the big bolt portions off this, this first layer. Um, this is what I use to pull baseboards off uh, at work, so it works pretty nice. Don't use it very often, but uh, it does come in handy. So uh, what I'm, that's what I'm gonna use that for. And then once you get past all that mess, then you start breaking out the hammer and the chisel just little by little, little at a time, just going in and, and getting it out. And what you wanna do is you just start a little bit. What also you wanna take and make miscellaneous relief cuts in here. Uh, and what that does is it gives you a breaking point. So when you're going up with your chisel and prying out, it gives a spot for the, the wood to break. So you can either do that by hitting with your chisel or you can use a cutter like a Dremel tool or an angle grinder or something like that. One thing about an angle grinder is when you get really close to the hull, you gotta be real careful about not going through. Now this boat has a super, super thick uh, gel coat application, which is pretty nice. It looks like there's only two uh, half inch, uh, well, maybe three quarter inch or five eighths uh, uh, pieces of plywood on here. Here's the, here's one of them. That might be three quarter, but I have to measure it. Not really sure, but anyway. So that's what I'm gonna start doing. I'm gonna pull it out little by little and show you kind of, they do come out pretty good, good sized chunks when they're rotten, but uh, start with the rotten stuff, get it out easy so you can get some confidence going and then bust into the new stuff, which is real difficult. Okay, remember what I was saying about large chunks? This is the upper portion of the transom. It sat just like that, so that's the second piece. I swear that's half inch. It can't be three quarter, maybe five eighths. I need to make sure I measure this before I throw it away. You can see that the only amount of glue they used is right there. They didn't completely glue it. And then they use staples that go through the uh, to hold it together. It's all about speed and how fast you can turn them out. I guess if they built them like we do, these boats would be a million dollars each for a 19 footer. So anyway, now I've got the easy stuff done. Now comes the hard part of getting the rest of the, 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 the one that's right up against the skin, and that's a big piece right there. It's gonna be a blast. Well, I think I found where the water was wicking into this lower part of the transom. You can see that it's wicked all the way up, all the way around the keyhole here. Well, the way the Sea Ray did this is that the transom really doesn't go all the way down to the hole. And then here's your uh, gabbard drain, or your the, um, the, the, the drain for the, the, the bilge. Now watch this. I haven't done any cutting yet, but watch. See where that comes through? There was actually where the fiberglass was not uh, attached good at all right there. So therefore water, whenever it was sitting in the bilge, would wick up into here and then just spread all throughout this. So that's one thing we gotta make sure that we really, really seal up is that little spot right there. All right, well, I've been out here for about an hour and a half, and I've got a lot done. I mean, I've been really impressed. Of course, this is where all the wet wood is. It makes it really easy to get the wet wood out. 
but I'm finding that uh, this hull is much thicker than my Glastrons. So you can be a little more aggressive with it than, uh, than normal. Um, and what I'm doing is once I get down to, you see this spot right here, this is where it's kind of glued onto the, the transom. You can do two things. You can get your grinder out and go to town with the grinder, or I use this, just go really, really close to the hull and with the hammer, and it basically brings it all up. So I'm getting the majority up with my pry bar, uh, and then I'm coming back with the hammer and the chisel. And you can see I've kind of gouged into some of this stuff, which is no big deal. You're going to end up grinding it to uh, give it some, uh, some uh, adhesion. Uh, or tooth, or it gives it when you grind these with with 36 or, or 26 grit sandpaper, you create like ridges in it, and the uh, adhesive or whatever you use. I'm going to use PL glue like I did in the Glastron, um, and to glue to it, so it gives it something to to attach to. So anyway, that's what I'm doing is I'm going along with my chisel, just a little bit at a time, getting all this out. And I can tell you, the underside of this was completely wet. The top looks like this, but underneath looks like this. So it wicked all the way up against the hull. So yeah, it's it's really coming out pretty easy. I'm really surprised so far. So uh, like I said, I'm keep on going here. This one's this side's nearly complete. A little more. Okay, I'm about two and a half hours in, and the uh, port side is done. I'm up to the halfway point of the transom, all the way down. This is what your transom should look like uh, after you finish stripping it back. You can see here's the outer skin, and that still has a little bit of wood on here. Right where it stopped being wet is when it got really, really hard and it was stuck on there like you wouldn't believe. So what it is, I just it's just little bits at a time uh, using your pry bar and using your chisel to get things going and, and just pry it off gently. Uh, nice thing is, is that let, the hole is really thick, so it's really easy for me to pry against without causing any distortion or anything. So it's one good thing C-Ray did is they built this hole with a lot of fiberglass. So anyway, with that being said, uh, once I'm all done with getting all this out, I'll take my grinder with my uh, 36 grit wheel and then get rid of the excess. I mean, that, that wood's probably, I mean, a sixteenth of an inch thick. It's not very thick. It's just the, the very outer layer. So that'll grind off pretty easily. So had to take me a break, take a drink of water. Now I'll go all the way across. So it's probably take me another two, two hours to get the rest of this done. So what's that, four, four and a half hours to get the whole transom out? That's a whipping but it's gotta be done. All right, so literally that took me uh, another 20 minutes. Um, apparently it was a lot more wet on that side. You can see that's the back side that went, that curvature, it went right there. And uh, once I got my pry bar behind it, a couple of taps, pretty much pried right out. Got a couple of spots I need to get some the chisel up on, but I'm kind of up in my neck and uh, chiseled pieces and splinters and all that kind of crap. So I'm gonna dump my little trash can out, do a little cleanup in here. I'll get back in here and mess with it. And then I'm gonna cut that lip off right there with my angle grinder and then get in here and start uh, doing a little bit of grinding, I think. Well, correction on the grinding for today. Uh, I was just informed by the boss that we uh, have dinner plans again tonight. So um, I guess we're just gonna clean up, put the book cover back on and uh, go take a shower and wash all this crap off me. So anyway, for next weekend or whenever I get back on it, that's when I'll start my grinding. And then I'll go pick me up. I've only got one 36 grit left over from last week, last year. So I'll just go get me a whole bunch of new ones. So that way it goes real fast. So anyway, that's it for this weekend. It's all done. That's how you take a transom out. Uh, takes a lot of time. Uh, not terrible a lot of time. Just depends on how bad your boat is and how big your transom is. But uh, it's not terrible. Just take your time and uh, be careful.